with with with, do with doctors and stuff because back then your parent they did things a lot differently your parents weren't allowed to stay over so i saw my mother walking away from me which she had to because after visiting hours and she had a she actually had to leave me there overnight they don't do that anymore which i'm very grateful for also when i was having surgeries um i was wheeled in there now these days and i'm very grateful for this your parents are allowed to bring you in the operating room. You're allowed to bring your stuffed animal in there as they're putting you to sleep with all these people around with their masks on. And it's, it, was, it was just horrible. And then unfortunately, in 2017, I was diagnosed with cancer. I lost 50 pounds within three weeks. It was horrible. None of the medications they gave me worked. The only thing that worked was medical cannabis, medical marijuana, you know, and then you can say, well, you can have delivery. Well, that's an added charge for somebody who's going through cancer treatments, somebody who's on disability. It's just, it's, it's just another burden for us. Um, and then you can say, well, you can take an Uber or a Lyft to the next town over. That's also more money for us, which we don't, which we do not have. And you say, well, maybe there's access link. Well, the disabled call it access link. Because you could be on there for a couple of hours. You know, I'm also with Sativi Cross. We also advocate for people's um, disabilities rights and medical rights and all these other things. Um, when I was going through my chemo, my doctor would tell me, please smoke before you see me. All doctors tell me to do that because I, I get such bad anxiety. And especially when I was going through chemo, I would smoke it in the parking lot. Go ahead, smoke. Nobody had a problem with me smoking in the parking lot, my, med my medicine. And, and, and it made me feel so much better. And in the state of New Jersey, you have 64 psychiatrists that prescribe medical cannabis to all sorts of people, to veterans, which I'm sure you have in your town. You also have 10 pediatric doctors that prescribe medical cannabis there was a child who had a 25 hour seizure because she could not get her medical cannabis. Imagine seeing a child, your child or any child having a 25 hour seizure because that child could not get their medical cannabis. So please stay open and please really think about the people in your town who use medical cannabis and who need that dispensary to live. Cause I'm sure you have CVS's, Walgreens and all sorts of pharmaceuticals places that prescribe opiates, which are addicting, which are killing people. I, there's never been a medical cannabis death anywhere. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Marina. I now have... Lucas Slot. Lucas? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Hi, Luke Slot, on Theora Road. Um, good evening. I come before the governing body tonight regarding the council's uh, lack of enthusiasm for retail sales in the township um, related to recreational cannabis. I'm a relatively- Enter your meeting ID followed by a pound. Sorry, I'm a relatively new resident, having moved here in November of 2019. Uh, and I actually moved here after 27 years of growing up in West Milford. Um, in addition to its natural beauty, my fiance and I moved to Vernon because of its relatively lower taxes uh, compared to Passaic County. Uh, she was from Pompton Lakes. So you can imagine my disappointment upon learning that, that some of you are not in favor of further property tax relief for our hardworking residents and business owners. Why should Vernon sacrifice revenue that could serve as relief during a time when some of our community members are struggling? I'll admit, uh, I was not fully educated on the language of the ordinance. Um, so I'd like to thank that first speaker for mentioning the details. And of course, I'm grateful that, you know, there is some openness to the types of businesses that will be allowed. However, our local residents need as many jobs as possible, or they need second or third jobs to afford the cost of living here in high tax New Jersey. 
by restricting retail establishments, not only are local jobs being negatively impacted, but please keep in mind that by having a dispensary, you lift up all local businesses. I know you have a packed agenda and a lot of speakers. So in closing, I just want to encourage you to consider smart zoning laws for retail establishments. For example, in West Milford, they are restricting retail establishments, I think within 2000, uh, forgive me, I don't know the exact measurement, but they're restricting it anywhere near schools, parks, et cetera. Um, you know, and I, I just want to thank you for your time and, and service to our community. Thank you, Lucas. I have um, Bill Durastra. Um, uh, okay, hi. Hi, Bill. So, I'm a Vernon resident. I live in Vernon Valley Lake. Some of you uh, might know me. Uh, I think in 2021, to have this conversation is, is really incredible because this, this law passed by 70 percent 70 percent of our voters so for any uh, people on the council that are against embracing you're going to pay dearly at the poll in the town we're struggling for money and our tax rate continues to go up even though the mayor and and harry have done a great job our taxes continually go up. And the, to not embrace dispensaries is insane because people are gonna get it, the, the, the delivery from out, out of the, the town. So um, we need the jobs, we need the revenue. Thank you. Thank you, Bill, appreciate it. Yeah. I have um, Jennifer Lubliner. Hi. I'm sorry, Jennifer, did I? I think we're both pressing the button at the same time. Yeah, we had her. Now she's muted. Okay. No, we're definitely for both. Can you hear me? Yes. Now we're we good. Okay. Yay. Um, so I also wanted to speak on the recreational cannabis use. Um, as the chairperson of the Economic Development Committee in town, I am in favor of retail sales. I don't believe we should have any restrictions on the type of cannabis businesses that we have in town. Um, I believe that this is a business decision and not a morality issue. So if you have a moral objection to cannabis use, that is something that you should hold to yourself and to your family and not something that you should apply to everybody else in town or to our business industry. Um, I think that if any of these types of business owners would like to invest in our town, we should be open to that. There are some statistics that I wanted to go over you briefly, not to get too technical. Um, historically, profits from the retail sales for cannabis use have surpassed all estimates, sometimes by nearly double or triple, and that includes other towns in New Jersey that have already opened businesses for cannabis use, as well as all of the other states that allowed it. Um, legalization. So it's not a small amount of money. It's a pretty significant amount. Um, I know we're not a big city. We're a pretty small town, but the average that I've seen for New Jersey towns is between $25,000 and $50,000 a month in tax revenue. So it's a very significant amount. Um, also, approving and allowing these types of businesses to not guarantee that one will come to Vernon. The business owners have to want to come into town, of course, and feel like there's a market here. So I'm in favor of letting the market decide. We should let the market determine whether or not this would be a successful business for our town. Um, it also gives us the opportunity, since a lot of other towns in this area have restricted the usage, it gives us the opportunity to be leaders in the industry, in the state, to show them how we can do it properly and how we can make this a beneficial um, investment into the town with our healthy town status and our outdoor recreation um, avenues that we have. We're four season, all, all season recreation outdoor town and we're one of the healthy communities that you guys tell us we've been voted on every year for the last several years. So we do have an opportunity to lead the state and show other community, communities how this can be beneficial. Um, I would also like to clarify, I know in the last meeting some people were 
calling marijuana a gateway drug. Per the CDC, marijuana is not considered a gateway drug. And statistically, most marijuana users do not try harder drugs. The people who do marijuana and harder drugs typically have other indicators of addiction and drug abuse, um, whether it's family history or mental illnesses. And medical marijuana and recreational marijuana use has a lot of benefits for town. Um, it does not ha it's not shown in any state across the country to have an increased rate in time in uh, crime rates or a violent crime. So it's actually shown to be the same crime rates or slightly lower in most municipalities. Um, well done, I lost my place here, sorry. It also is not really functionally different than having another liquor store or a bar in town. So if you're somebody who would be happy to see a bar or liquor store in town, you should not have any objection to retail marijuana sales. That's legal, it's 21 and over, it's shown to reduce opioid addiction um, and prescription drug abuse, and it's shown to actually decrease a lot of o OD rates for overdoses. So it's been shown to help some of the communicated communi uh, communities such as ours that have historically struggled with drug abuse. Um, that's all that I have for right now. The EDAC is drafting a letter to the town council at our next meeting on July the 6th. So you guys will receive that next week. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, next, I have Koru Medical Marketing. Sorry about that. That's my work Zoom. Didn't mean for that to be a thing. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm here with my husband. I'm Caitlin Jurgensen. This is Adam Jurgensen. Yeah, and we're, I mean, everyone else kind of uh, spoke to um, what, we're, what we're looking to discuss at this point, which is the, uh, the, the cannabis market here in Vernon. Um, we, uh, we're, we're pretty much just going to reiterate the exact same things you guys have <laughs> heard this entire meeting, but yeah, there's 70% of this township who has voted uh, for this, and um, I think it would be pretty much against our interests to, to, to go otherwise. Um, we've had property taxes increase thousands of dollars, us as uh, new homeowners within this community over, or, with the, or we just bought a home two years ago, we, we've seen our property taxes increase exponentially at this point. It would be nice to have some kind of relief uh, being new homeowners. And uh, um, with the previous uh, the speaker had said, Councilwoman Weller had stated that marijuana is a gateway drug. And um, I, I absolutely disagree with that and uh, do not believe that's true. There's been multiple scientific articles saying that that is not the case. Um, cannabis legal states have a lower rate of opioid and hard drug overdoses uh, compared to uh, before making cannabis legal and uh, even taking that out of consideration, we're still a legal state. So if we don't sell it here and we don't take advantage of this, um, people are buying it elsewhere and bringing it into our town. Um, it's, it's coming here regardless. So uh, that, that's pretty much my stance on this. And uh, thank you. I appreciate this. Thank you. Um, next, I have um, Lefty Grimes. I'll let them talk and we'll find out what their name, are. name is. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Good evening, Council. My name is Edward Lefty Grimes. I'm with sativacross.org. We're a 501c3 here in New Jersey. We're advocating for disabled rights and for cannabis patients' rights. And I'd like you to consider people in wheelchairs when you make any ordinance that's going to affect medical cannabis patients. Because that's what we're here to talk about, medical patients, people that are sick and dying, people that are put on the last of the line right now. People in wheelchairs are put in the back of the line. And I, I know from going to church, we're supposed to, put the, we're supposed to put the last first. It's very simple, a very simple philosophy, putting the last first. And I don't see it anywhere in New Jersey anymore. I, we need more compassion for the sick and the dying. That includes, includes wheelchair access. If you take this tax, this wheelchair tax, I call it, it's a ca ta cancer tax and tax on multiple sclerosis. Uh, give us representation for that taxation. Give us wheelchair access anywhere there is none in these towns. I, I don't know how um, specifically 
uh, Vernon's uh, problems are with wheelchair access, but it's everywhere in New Jersey. And when I go around to these towns that are taking this wheelchair tax, that's what I ask for. I ask for representation for that taxation and put the last first and help people that are in wheelchairs because a lot of towns that are banning cannabis, well, first of all, we're getting hit from all sides. We're getting a 7% tax from the state, 2% tax from these towns. And then we're getting moldy cannabis from these big corporations that are coming in there. You should have an ordinance that people that have cannabis businesses in your town live in your town or live in the county. You don't want these huge outside corporations coming in here just making building an industry off the sick and the dying because that's what's happening here i'm a cannabis activist i'm telling you what's going on here and it's all about money that's all they're seeing right now and i'm here to tell you that we need to have compassion for the sick and the dying we need to glorify god and we're not doing that we're hurting sick and dying people people that the vets disabled vets are being uh, pushed back in their homes they can't get out. My buddy is in down in the shore on the island, and they just banned it in his town. He has to drive an hour to get his medicine. He already had cannabis for his PTSD years ago, and now he has cancer on top of that. And we can't get FICO for cancer. We don't get God's medicine here. We have no problem selling synthetic marijuana in the pharmacies, 100% THC, but God's medicine we, stig we stigmatize. Yet we sell it in the pharmacies. The pharmacies that are giving out deadly poisons that are sending people on, uh, out on Narcan all the time. Our, our police are running around waking people up on Narcan from all these pharmacies knocking people out. And they're selling synthetic marijuana. Nobody's up in arms about that, though. So I ask you, I urge you to please keep the people that are sick and dying in first and foremost in your mind. And give us wheelchair access. Give the sick and dying what they need. I don't care about recreational. I really don't. I'm here to support the sick people that are in bed right now, that are on their deathbeds. And I appreciate you, ha you having this meeting virtually because there are people that are disabled that could not take part otherwise. Uh, we gave, we gave able-bodied people for 14 months all these things that disabled people have been asking for for years. Online school, online church, online work, online council meetings. Now they're taking it away. And for 14 months, you gave it to us for healthy people, disabled people, couldn't, can't take part anymore in a lot of times. So thank you for having this virtual meeting. It's very important for disabled people to take part in these things also. So thank you very much for that. Thank, thank you, sir. I have um, Jamie Van Skyver. I don't know why it's doing that, but. Yes, Jamie? good evening. Uh, my name's Jamie Vanskyver. Can you hear me? Yes. yes, we can. Okay, great, thank you. Um, I'm from Paulsboro, New Jersey, and I'm also with Sativa Cross. Um, if I may ask, are you guys planning on going back to in-person meetings and ceasing remote completely? Uh, we don't answer questions at this time because it's just for public comment and we don't want to start a president starting debates and stuff but i've addressed that on facebook and we will be addressing that again in the uh, future okay um i would like to ask if you were able to which for the like as mr grimes stated the past 14 months we've all been you know becoming accustomed to these remote meetings and it hasn't been an easy road um, there are a lot of people that are not healthy and well enough to kind of join the general population in venturing back out into groups. Um, there's immune compromised people. There's people with cancer that are getting treatments that shut down their immune system. Um, there's people that just physically are incapable, whether you have a ramp, like they're in a hospital bed. Jeff Oaks attended a meeting with us 10 days before his passing, and he was laying in one of those beds. Um, it's important for your constituents to be able to be present and participate and have a voice in their community. And we're not asking for anything. We're just asking for it to not be taken away from these people. Um, I'm a medical cannabis patient. I suffer from chronic illness and chronic pain. I have systemic lupus, which is an immune illness. Um, I'm not taking any pharmaceuticals and I haven't for years. Um, I've been treating it completely with cannabis. Um, I think it's important for the people in your community to have access um, 
every human body has an endocannabinoid system in it. It's an anatomical fact. Um, and it's a plan. It's working with these people. People are not overdosing and you won't be using Narcan. Um, just ask that you stop stigmatizing, at least for the medical patients, especially for the people suffering, dying, that don't want to get into the cycle of controlled substances. Um, chronic pain people, these are things that are not going away. And I think we can all understand that the body builds tolerances and they take more. And that's not putting that person down a, a good road for their health. It's just ravaging to the body. Um, I hope that you listen to your constituents. Over 70% of them want adult use recreation. And I hope that you listen to them. And I think that it'll show in voting if not. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, I have um, Scott Geisel. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, Scott. Good evening, Scott. Hey, how are you? Good. Hey, uh, thanks. I, I just want to uh, add in my two cents about the, the uh, uh, cannabis ordinance thing. Thank you very much. Um, I support it and would also support a dispensary in town, and I'm not somebody that smokes marijuana, but um, I, I think there is a, a misconception out there about dispensaries, uh, as myself also had too, until I had gone on business, went to Boston, happened to see, look outside my hotel and see lines around the block, and I went to see what was going on, and I went in and visited a dispensary up there. And I gotta say, there's, there was a constant line of, of people waiting out the door around the corner to get in the place. And these were people that were, I mean, it wasn't, a, you know, a, a criminal element or anything. Um, it wasn't a seedy place. The place was run very efficiently, uh, much akin to being a bank. And the amount of people that it drew into that community was unbelievable. Um, I, I think it would be a great thing, a big, great benefit to our, our township if we can consider having a dispensary in town as well. That's all I just wanted to add. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Um, I have George N. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, yes George. Good evening. Good evening. George Nikonarov, uh, Briar Drive, Sussex. Uh, I uh, first want to say thank you for holding these meetings virtually. I've been attending these for a few months now, and uh, I found it very convenient and a, uh, a, a good way to keep up on what's happening with the town. Uh, I've been listening to, the, uh, to uh, a number of people comment about the uh, cannabis ordinance, and uh, I wanted to put my two cents on a couple things. Uh, so first, uh, I am one of those people that voted uh, in favor of uh, putting, uh, you know, of uh, legalizing cannabis in the state. Uh, I am, uh, even though, you know, I, I see certain viewpoints uh, with council members, uh, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, some of the challenges with families and all that stuff, I, I don't believe that uh, the statistics uh, support uh, the, um, the notion of, uh, of uh, you know, not having a, can a, 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 a place to buy cannabis here in town. Uh, so I'm in support of all these things, but I just wanted to give some food for thought. Um, even, you know, above all else, while we're also a, uh, you know, trying to be a family-oriented community, uh, we are a uh, Four Seasons Recreation designated community. Uh, and uh, as, as such, uh, you know, one of the things that, uh, you know, goes to that recreation community is um, the, um, is, uh, the vacationers that come in. They're going to be bringing this uh, stuff in no matter we, whether we uh, uh, restrict it or not. And so if it were my preference between uh, make, making the tax revenue on, on this uh, versus uh, shutting the door and still paying uh, for the uh, enhanced programs and the like that uh, would uh, be required, uh, I would be for making the money and keeping it in town. Uh, another piece I just wanted to put out is some food for thought. Uh, prohibition in the uh, in the 1930s, uh, where they uh, banned alcohol uh, sales uh, and uh, created multiple dry towns across the uh, country. That ended up having an economic fallout, uh, you know, tantamount to uh, adding to the Great Depression. And so uh, we now have an opportunity to lift Vernon out 
of the uh, out of uh, certain burdens. We ha we see sales going up. We see uh, many other things happening, uh, and this is just another part of the journey uh, that uh, Vernon can take in order to get us out of uh, out of a rut and uh, bring in more retail. Uh, and so I'd like to echo um, my. Uh, um, my, uh, my, my approval for a dispensary as well as, um, you know, urge the council members to keep an open mind and, uh, you know, make the right decisions. So thank you very much. Thank you, George. Um, I have Anel, Anil. Hello, my name is Ann Larson. I'm a Vernon resident and uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak. I would like to say that I'm probably the first person who found all night that voted no for the, for the marijuana bill. So uh, finally an opposing viewpoint. And honestly, I, I feel like the deck was kind of stacked with all these union representatives and people from Parnell and all these other far away areas, Eatontown, having something to say about what goes on in Vernon, in our little tiny Vernon Township. And despite all these people, I hadn't heard that you mentioned for example, for example, the uh, Department of Human Services, Sussex County Abuse Coordinator, Nick Louisi, do we ask him for his opinion on how this goes? I mean, some people have mentioned the gateway drug, maybe he'd have some uh, information to impart. The zoning episodes of, of you know, where it would be okay, and maybe episode wasn't the right word, but where it's okay, where it's not okay. I feel like you should just sit back and watch what happens with the other people that jump off the ledge right away. Or as, as it is, Franklin already said no and Sussex said no. So maybe it's prudent to sit back and watch and readdress this thing in six months or so. You have the opportunity to do that. But jumping on board and saying, yeah, yeah, we're going to do it, it may not be the wisest thing. Um, I don't see that the 2% uh, is going to make or break this town because we spend money like it's going out of style. So we'll spend right through that 2% in a, in a heartbeat. So I, I would ask for cooler heads to prevail. My heart goes out to those who have medical issues and perhaps if we spent the six months evaluating how best to handle things for those particular patients, I think the time would be very well spent. But jumping on board and just saying, yeah, let's do it. I don't think that's the way to go. Thank you and I appreciate the time. Thank you, Ann. Um, I have Matthew Con Conway. Yes, hi, can you hear me? Hi, Mr. Conway, yes, we hi. can. Okay, great. Um, I'm actually, um, just to, to follow, uh, actually, Anne, you, you have another person here who voted no um, for the marijuana legalization. And, and I'll tell you, the only reason I had voted no um, was because the only thing I see marijuana revenue doing is being spent. You know, I just, that's all I see it, and that's why I think it's just something that's gonna get spent, uh, I think, in as far as a, state going i think any of the revenue is just going to grow government um and that's why i voted no for it i don't really have an issue with anybody smoking marijuana um but uh but i also on that then end of it i i don't think i want to see it um sold here in town in, in a retail I, I just you know this is a, a bedroom community up here um you know and i, I just don't think it, it goes along with our values of our town um, you know, like I said, I don't, I don't have an issue with anybody that smokes it. I, I don't smoke it myself. Um, but I have to, I have to agree with a lot of what Ann had just, had just said. I, I think it's just to rush right into it. Um, you know, I think cooler heads do need to prevail. Uh, and I, and I also, you know, and I, I just can't help but, um, but notice how, how Vernon is kind of, you know, looking to, to, to newly legalized drugs to, to save ourselves here. You know, I, I just can't help but, but, but notice that um, I, I just I just think uh, I, I just think we should we should wait the six months and let us see how and I just think there's a reason other towns have been opting out of it and I, and I think for right now Vernon should as well thank you thank you Matt uh, Christine Dunn Here we go. My name is Christine Dunn and I live in Verna Valley Lakes and I just want to say something quick about the two other responses about um, the legalization of the dispensary in, in Vernon and I also voted no for the legalization of marijuana basically for the same reason that last gentleman did but I don't think it's really fair for you guys to think about those people that you just said 
like the cancer people and the people that need it for medical reasons, that you say, oh, we should wait six months. These people might not have six months, just so you know. Okay, that's all I have to say. Thank you, Christine. Um, Bill DeResta. Uh, he already spoke already. Spoke, yes. Okay, I did get, um, I have no other hands up. I did get two emails. One of them was from Rick Thompson, but I believe he already spoke. I spoke, yes. Um, I did get another one. Marcy, uh, you know, tomorrow you could forward that to the rest of the council for informational purposes, Mr. Thompson, if you'd be so kind. Sure. Um, this is from Peter Pazer. Um, how would the sales be taxed and what would the revenue, revenue be earmarked for, hopefully to reduce our taxes? And that is, I see no other hands, and those are the only emails I received. Okay. Thank you. Seeing there are no more members, no more members of the public wishing to come forward, may I have a motion to close the meeting to the public? Kelly, did you make a motion? Because sorry, I was muted. Yes, motion to close the meeting to the public. Thanks, Kelly. Before we do a second on this, uh, there's a note here that this is a different Rick Thompson on that email. Oh. Okay. So I think it's just fair to give him a chance. Absolutely. I wouldn't have known that. Thank you. Let me find it. Sorry for the delay, but being fair to all. Yeah, no, that's what we have to do. Um, Okay, so I will read this. Hold on one second. Okay. Um, 70, and this is from, again, um, Rick Thompson. 70% of Vernon voted in favor. There's no reason to ban it. We are a resort town with a lot of short-term visitors. Slap the max allowed town sales tax on it. And same with Airbnbs, if you haven't as well. Then lower our property tax or use the revenue to improve our schools, actually both. It'd be stupid to let a neighboring town take that opportunity from us. The state law allows it to be delivered to people in Vernon if we ban the sales. Had New York not followed us on making it legal, we would have been in an event great I'm sorry, we would have been in an even greater position to really make money off the New York City vacationers. Closest ski resort to New York City and legal marijuana for sale. And I personally have a transportation job with regular drug testing. I can't even use the drug, but still have the stance. This is a no brainer. It's going to be state legal regardless of how much you don't like it. Why ban business in this town? Our town is already dull enough compared to what it could be. Um, and then I believe he says, for example, Warwick. We need to get proactive, create revenue streams, and use them to further improve this town, which will create future additional revenue streams. We lack any real downtown. We lack any culinary draw. We lack any breweries wineries, cideries, and we lack crowd drawing bars. Why, why is Vernon surrounded but all these booming businesses, yet we can't seem to get even one right? People are driving through here to do all these things. We can't let our town regulate yet another opportunity. Hardiston will love taxing the Vernon residents who order their mar marijuana for delivery not to mention all that traffic that passes through Vernon, including the vacationers coming here. They too all will stop in Hardiston to buy in Hardiston 
pay the tax in Hardiston and still legally smoke here in Vernon because the consuming in private in Vernon, you can't stop no matter what. That ship sailed. And that's the email I received. Thank you, Marcy. Kelly made a motion to close the floor to the public. Is there a second? I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? I don't see any. So go ahead, Marcy, what were you saying? I'm talking to my dog. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's right. Woman's best friend, right? Yes. Um, therefore, the floor is closed to the public. All right, number seven on your um, agenda. Uh, I have a motion to adopt the following minutes. June 14th, 2021, regular meeting. That's the only one. Motion to approve the minutes. Okay, John. Second. And Kelly's on second. Roll call, please. Sure. Vice President Orberger. Yes. Council Member Chili. Yes. Council Member Pitzker. Yes. Yes. Council President Shortway. Yes. Motion carries. Resolutions. Resolution 21-158, renewal of liquor licenses in the Township of Vernon for the 2021-2022 licensing term. This resolution approves the renew of liquor licenses. May I have a motion to approve resolution 21-158? I have a question on this one. Is um, Legends, is Legends included in this? No. No, these, no. Are, these are the um, liquor license that are not in pocket. These are um, liquor licenses that Practice. are being used and okay. have done everything they need to do to renew. Perfect, thank you. You're welcome. Motion to approve resolution 21-158. Second. Roll call, please. Vice President Orberger. Yes. Council Member Chili. Yes. Council Member Pitzker. I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. Sorry. Council Member Weller. Yes. Council President Shortway. Yes. Motion carries. Resolution number 21-159, renewal of an inactive liquor license, t and Holding Company, LLC, requiring special ruling in the Township of Vernon for the 2021-2022 licensing term. This resolution approves the renewal of an inactive liquor license. May I have a motion to approve resolution 21-159? Motion to approve the minutes. Second. Do, do we have any? Do we have any idea when they're going to go ahead? I know last um, last time we approved this, we we were told there was something in the works. Mayor Burrell, do yes. we have any more updated information? Well, I, I spoke I spoke to them. Uh, they most certainly plan to use their license. Uh, they did not give me necessarily a definite date, but as it relates to these liquor licenses, they're very expensive. They paid a lot of money for it, and they don't. They, they don't want it sitting there either. And I understand they are not actively using it. But they're, you know, they're looking, they're, 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 they're making, um, they plan to use this at Heaven Hill. They're making uh, some changes and some other things related to that. They're making kind of a business decision. And I think my comments to the council has been that uh, if in fact we don't approve the license, we get nothing. Right. I mean, we, 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 we get nothing. I understand. I heard a person tonight talk about the fact that maybe we ought to have an ordinance or something that says that if, if, if they don't use it, we don't, uh, uh, we, we don't approve it. But as it relates to the, these individuals, are they pay all their taxes, they're good citizens and what have you. But I can't tell you, council member, that they tell me they're going to use it, use it, start using it next month or two months from now. I do believe that they want to use it, but they aren't using it yet. Okay. And we renew these every year? Is that? Every, every year. A liquor okay. license comes up for renewal every year. And we kind of have this discussion. And, you know, uh, I think rightly so, uh, uh, Council President Short, Short, we most certainly challenges me and others on that. Um, and I, I, I'm in favor of renewing it only because of the fact not renewing it gains us nothing. 
I do think it's something we should potentially look into down yeah, the road. Like I mean, we could potentially be keeping someone else from, from opening a location and using this liquor license, right? Who want to use it now. And I get that these guys are saying they're going to and, you know, not renewing it gets us nothing. I get that, but it could potentially be keeping someone else from opening a, a location. So just something to think about down the road. But yes, just, just, just a comment. And I hear that loud and clear. Uh, the person who owns a liquor license, you can't force them to sell it. You can't force them to sell it to someone else. I don't really know. I, uh, there are only a certain number of liquor licenses that are issued. They're issued by the state and not by us. Um, um, what's, for example, Legends, their liquor licenses are, I would love for that to be sold to somebody else, but, we, but it's not. So it's not that if we don't renew it to them, for them, that they're going to automatically sell it to someone else. In fact, I had mentioned that to the owners, and they said, if you could find me a buyer, I think they paid, I don't know, 200 some thousand dollars for the license. If you could find me a buyer, I'll sell it immediately. Don't know if that's true or not, but that's what they said. The ABC, my opinion, you know, and I've dealt with the ABC for decades, literally. They aren't going to force them to sell it this year, particularly, or have any restrictions because of the COVID. They're going to give them uh, the full year. So I think, you know, the, the owners, they know, and I know they talk to the mayor all the time. Uh, they know this council is looking at it. Uh, we've made stands and statements before about getting these liquor licenses active. So I, I think it's, it's prudent to wait the rest of this year. And this is going to come up next uh, March or February. I forget what the deadline is. And uh, we'll hold our feet to the fire then because there's plenty of time. Uh, we're coming out of COVID, and I know construction costs are high right now, but it, it's time to move forward, and I, I believe the owners want to do that. They're looking at, we all know the Pennings model, and that's New York State, I know, and they got to overcome some of those challenges that are going to be imposed on them by the uh, title. So I think we do have the motion on the floor, Marcy, right? We need a second? Yes, yes we do. Uh, just so want to make sure no one, does anybody else have a comment to make on this? Because I don't want to shut anybody down. Okay. Nope, second. Okay, we're all good? Okay, roll call, please. Vice President Orberger? Yes. Council Member Chili? Yes. Council Member Pitzker? Reluctantly, yes. I'd like to see a business plan at some point. We've got one year. Hopefully, by then, we've got this license moving, so I'll hold it. Okay, if my answer is yes. Okay. Council Member Weller? Yes. Council President Shortway? Yes. Motion carries. Resolution 21-161, resolution referring redevelopment plan for block 404 lot board to the land use board. This resolution refers a redevelopment plan to the land use board. Uh, Mayor, is this uh, 8 Theta Drive? Do I have the uh, address correct? Yes, and, and I'd like to make a com some comments on that. <clears throat> this, this resolution 21-161 is on tonight's agenda for the council approval as a result of the fact that I have been contacted by a Vernon resident who wants to build a car wash. And he wants to build it on a long time vacant lot in our town center redevelopment and sewer service areas. However, a car wash is not one of the uses that our current town center redevelopment plan allows for this lot. In order for this development, which will bring additional needed commercial tax dollars plus a needed town service. In order for this development to become a reality, the council must approve a redevelopment plan for the specific long time vacant lot on which the car wash is to be built. I'm strongly in favor of the council approving this specific redevelopment plan. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm strongly in favor of it because of the following three reasons. First, a car wash built on a vacant lot in our town center redevelopment area would increase the tax value of the lot and hopefully contribute to attracting other commercial enterprises to our town center. Second, a car wash would be the kind of commercial enterprise which would be a welcome and needed user for our municipal sewer system and would provide the MUA and the town some of the needed additional dollars that are required for use to be able to help us achieve our goal of stabilizing and really hopefully reducing at some point in time sewer rates in our town. And the third reason is that a car wash would provide a much needed service to our town's residents and to the visitors to our town. You know, Vernon is probably the only town in the state of New Jersey 
with almost 25,000 people and no car wash. We need to change that. Our principal planner, Ms. Jessica Caldwell, has completed the specific redevelopment plan for this lot. And the Vernon resident and developer has paid her for the work by an escrow account that he established with the town. The redevelopment plan that this Vernon residents and developer needs is the same type of specific redevelopment plan that the council recently approved for the redevelopment of the DNS mall property. And that's the Circle K project. Since this is the second specific redevelopment plan that we've been asked to approve during the last 11 months, I did some research into the issue of specific redevelopment plan. I talked to many other mayors and I've actually done some, some, some research, some reading and some discussion with people down at the state. This is what I found. Number one, a redevelopment plan that's put together by a municipality is simply a reflection of how they wish or desire their town to develop. Number two, development within a municipality almost never, almost never happens in accordance with the wishes and desires that are reflected in their redevelopment plan. And when the properties in a redevelopment area remain vacant for years and sometimes decades, as the case with this particular lot in our town, and the municipality gets a request for a development that does not fit within the town's wishes or desires for a specific piece of property, the town has to make a judgment call as to if this requested development is good for this specific piece of property and if it's good for the town. New Jersey recognized this. In fact, they passed a law that's New Jersey's local redevelopment and housing law. It vests the authority to make this judgment call with the municipal government, that's us, and the land use board. This type of judgment call is actually made routinely throughout all of New Jersey municipalities, and it is not considered to be spot zoning. This is the exact process that we followed in making the decision to support the redevelopment plan for the DNS mall. And again, that was Circle K. My last point on this is that to move this Vernon car wash project forward, I'm requesting uh, your approval of this resolution, which would refer this matter, this redevelopment plan to the land use board for review. Um, and, and it would then give this, uh, uh, this, this, this developer and resident an opportunity to, to build this car wash in our town. Those are my comments, Mr. Council President and council members. Thank you, Mayor. Any other council? Okay, uh, can I have a motion? Motion to approve 21-161. Second that. Roll call, please. Four. Vice President Auburger? Yes. Council Member Chili? Yes. Council Member Pitzker? Yes. Council Member Weller? Yes. Council President? Yes. Motion carries. Resolution 21-161. Mm -hmm. Yes. LJ security for replacement of municipal building fire alarm system. This resolution approves the award of the bid. May I have a motion to approve resolution 21 162? Resolution to approve 21 162. Second. Roll call, please. Vice, Vice President Auburger? Yes. Council Member Chili? Yes. Council Member Pitzker? Yes. Council Member Weller? I'm Kelly? Sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, Council President Shortway? Yes. Motion carries. Resolution number 21 163, authorized change order number one of contract for proposed improvement of raised pavement markers to Breakneck Road, phase two, with zone striping ink. This resolution approves a change order. May I have a motion to approve resolution 21 163? Motion to approve resolution 21 163. Second. Roll call, please. Vice President Orberger? Yes. Council Member Chili? Yes. Council Member Pitzker? Yes. Council Member Weller? Yes. 
Council President Shortway. Yes. Motion carries. Resolution number 21-164, authorizing the cancellation of outstanding checks over six months old to municipal cash balances. Oh, he froze again. Are you back? Can you? Are you back, Harry? Yeah, you're froze. You're froze. <laughs> yeah. Am I uh, back at? Yeah, you're yes. back. Right, I'll read it. Resolution number 21-160, authorizing council outstanding checks, six months old to municipal cash balances. This resolution authorizes the cancellation of outstanding checks. May I motion to approve resolution dash 1-160. Motion to approve resolution 21-164. Second. Second. Roll call, please. Vice President Auerberger? Yes. Council Member Chili? Yes. Council Member Pitzka? Yes. Council Member Weller? Yes. Council President Shortway? Yes. Motion carries. Resolution 21 165, resolution authorizing award of contracts to vendors with national cooperative contracts for ambulance for Glen, Glenwood Pochuck Ambulance Corps. This resolution authorizes the award of a contract. We may I have a motion to approve resolution 21 165. Motion, motion to, to approve. approve resolution. Okay. 21 165. Tony on the motion. Andrew, you want to second that? Second that. Roll call, please. We got a little delay. Vice President Warburger? Yes. Council Member Chili? Yes. Council Member Pitzker? Yes. Mr. Weller? Yes. Council President Shortway? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, uh, resolution number 21-166, authorize the award of a required disclosure contract with Premier Garage Doors for Department of Public Works Garage Door Construction. This resolution authorizes the award of a required disclosure contract. May I have a motion to approve resolution 21-166? Motion to approve resolution 21-166. Second. Roll call, please. Vice President Orberger. Yes. Council Member Finney. Yes. Council Member Pitzker. Yes. Council Member Weller. Yes. Council President Shortway. Yes. Motion carries. What I'd like to do is combine the next uh, resolutions. I'll read them only because we've had technical difficulties now and I don't, I want to get as much business as we can. Um, so I'll, I'll read them, I'll go up to 21-173. Uh, and of course, anybody can pull any resolution if they want a discussion or if they have to uh, uh, recuse themselves. So resolution 21-167, resolution authorizing purchase of dump body equipment through Source Well National Cooperative 080818 HPI through Henderson Products, Inc. This resolution authorizes the purchase of a dump body equipment. Resolution 21-168, authorizing contract with New Jersey State contract vendor, Dell Technologies for computer equipment. This resolution authorizes a contract for computer equipment. Then we have re resolution number 21-169, refund overpayment block 527, lot 266, Wells Fargo Real Estate Tax Services. This resolution and resolutions 21-170, 21-171, 21-172, and 21-173 authorizes refund over payments. May I have a motion to approve those resolutions? What are we at? 167 through 173. Okay. Motion to approve resolutions 21-167 through resolution 21-173. Thank you. Kelly Thon, the second roll call, please. Vice President Orberger. Yes. Council Member Chili? Yes. Council Member Pitzker? Yes. Council Member Weller? Yes. Council President Shortway? Yes. Motion carries. Resolution 21 174, resolution of the Township of Vernon opposing to, to construction of compression turbines on the Tennessee gas pipeline running through northern New Jersey. This resolution opposes construction of the compression turbine. I would like to. Uh, have a discussion on this. 
and I'd like to start it off. I believe it was last Wednesday at the Sussex County Commissioner's meeting, uh, Tennessee Pipeline was supposed to uh, appear for presentation. Uh, I think, it, Marcy, was it three or four weeks ago, I submitted questions, they asked for questions. A lot of my questions were how it's gonna be monitored, uh, those things of that nature. The presentation never went forward. The presenter was held up with transportation. I was taken back because if you're gonna do such a large project with such controversy, you don't have a backup plan that if one presenter can't show up, you don't have a second one to come in. So those questions that I had were not uh, answered. They did have someone speak on behalf of their company, uh, but it was just about the jobs. And then we had union people, and I'm giving you the synopsis of what transpired that night. I did say, to, I stay to hear some of the, the public speak. Uh, they're looking at about 150 jobs. Uh, they admitted a lot of these jobs would be transient. They would be coming from other parts of the United States, like the South, uh, for two years. So their position was, hey, we're gonna give you 150 jobs, not to all to residents. Uh, but I also remember uh, they were saying how they were going to dump money into our economy. But I also remember 2008 when we had the death, the murder at Legends. So I don't care how much money they dumped into our system. By the time we investigated that, prosecuted the case, incarcerated the one individual, then it went out on appeal. I'm sure it far exceeded what happened there. Now, that's not to say pipeline workers are all criminals and stuff. But I just don't go for, hey, we're going to have jobs for two years. For 150 people, we can't even identify how many residents. So that is just, and again, I want to emphasize, I'm not saying the pipeline workers are all criminals and, and stuff like that. I'm not saying that, but it can go bad real fast. So the job issue didn't resonate with myself. What did resonate was the mayor of Sparta, who had someone speak on her behalf, that Wanich doesn't want this in their community. There are, there are neighbors. Now, West Milford also has one. They didn't uh, approve it and not approve it. But Wanage said no. And I, the way I submitted the resolution was, I believe we have to back up our neighbors. Uh, they don't want it, nurse. And I just feel we have to back them up. So the other thing that resonated with me, and I knew this from my research, Governor Cuomo and the majority of the legislator in New York have banned fracking in New York. So it seems a little hypocritical to me. You're going to buy or Con Ed's going to buy gas, fracked in Pennsylvania, roll it through New Jersey and also New York, but you don't allow fracking in your own state. So for those reasons, principally because of Wanage's stance, that's why I submitted this resolution. I've done a lot of research. I spoke about that on, on other uh, meetings about it. Uh, you know, I'm not against infrastructure, but I'm going to back up Wanage on this, and that's my position. So anybody else wants to chime in, feel free to, please. Well, I do, we, I don't know. So I feel a little hypocritical with this because we're talking about another ordinance that we're so worried about bringing jobs in with cannabis, but here's some jobs and we're gonna say no to this. We talk about backing up other towns. I have a list of towns that aren't backing cannabis, opting out. So I don't know. It's we're being kind of hypocritical here. So that's my opinion. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. I have to say my personal opinion is, is that TVA, Tennessee Valley Gas and Pipeline, they don't have a good reputation and they, they're not giving us any benefits. I mean, we've watched them put pipeline in through this town and it took years for things to be replenished and they still got a punch list of things they need to fix. Have we done anything about that? Have we gone after them? Yeah, I know you said it's not the, our The thing our, is, Tony, our town. Tony, I'm speaking, okay? The thing is, but I'll answer your question, is that we are responsible for this town, but it's their responsibility to take care of their checklist, and the responsibility has been over five years, and they've done this to towns all over the place. And yes, we can follow up on those punch lists, but it's their, you know, we can do that. But well, we should, right? Yeah, we can do that, but that's it's our responsibility. responsibility. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm done. I'm, no, I'm sorry. But I do think it's our responsibility as a town to follow up. You can't just say, hey, they didn't do it. What have we done to make sure they followed up on this? 
And I agree. We have a lot of people in this town that do use gas to heat their homes. I mean, some other town down the street could say, you know, is it going to raise anyone's prices? I know it's not ours. It's not raising our community, but we still have to worry about other people. And I do think it's our, yeah, we, I don't know. I just think we're being hypocritical here. We, we have to be, we have to be responsible for what goes on in our town. So right. there's some follow-up required on our side, no, for sure. I, I agree with you there, but my experience with TVA has not been good and they have never been a good corporate partner to towns. And you've seen it here. You see it going through Pine Island. Everywhere they dig a ditch, all right, they have not cleaned up their mess. And that's their responsibility. And we all have to chase them town for town. So that's just my opinion. And I don't want to, and as far as gas here, tenant TVA doesn't supply us with gas. No, I know that. Okay. And the only thing this is doing is going right through here and, you know, backing our, our neighbor up, I think is an important part of this, but also from the environmental side, we haven't gotten all the information. I've asked both, um, the pros and the cons, and I have gotten very little information other than what I get. So I think it is the responsibility of TVA to fix it and bring us that information. So, I mean, you could propose to, you know, sideline this resolution or vote on it, but uh, they sure haven't come to the, to the ballpark to help this town or any other town. John, do you have any uh, statement? looking to support wattage that's it and i agree i like supporting our towns but we should support them with other votes too not just pick and choose just saying well can i have a motion for resolution 21-174 motion for 21-174 second that roll call please vice president orberger yes Council Member Chili? No. Council Member Pitsker? Yes. Council Member Weller? Yes. Council President Shortway? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, number nine, introduction, first reading of proposed ordinances. An ordinance amending, revising, and supplementing sections 330-4 Title definition section 330, Schedule A, title permitted, conditional and accessory uses and structures. And section 330-164, titled offensive uses prohibited of the land development code of the Township of New Jersey, Township of New Jersey, Vernon, to regulate the cultivation, processing, sales, and distribution of legal cannabis within the Township of Vernon. This ordinance amends, revises, and supplements the land development code. May I have a motion to introduce 21-16? I guess a uh, discussion. Sure, Tony, start it off. Um, I just don't know where, so we said we would bring any ordinance that we wanted to. So I asked Josh to write one. It doesn't really look anything like this. So I was wondering what, um, where this one came from. I wrote one. Uh, I guess about two weeks ago when I submitted it to Josh for legal review. Um, and I also, the mayor had it and I asked for it to be put it on the agenda after it withstood legal uh, muster. Wait, but how come mine wasn't looked at or spoken to me about? I never saw yours. No one submitted it to me. Okay. Um, Tony, you know, so if you submit me to me, I would put it on the agenda. It was never submitted to me. Okay, and then this micro business. Um, I've looked at every town's ordinances, like when we talk about, you know, supporting other towns. Sussex has said no, Hapakon has said no, Stillwater, Hampton, Sandy Stin, Lafayette, Franklin, Montague, Green, Sparta, Hamburg, Kinelon. Um, and not one of them has mentioned a micro business. So we're saying no retail, but a micro business is business. So can someone explain that to me? So uh, the mayor came to me and said, we'll do a compromise. And the compromise was no retail, but here in this micro business, which is not in anyone else's <laughs> ordinance in any town, it says we can have retail. J Josh, can you uh, explain that? And where did that come from? How come no other town has mentioned that? Mm, sure, I can explain. So first of all, 
in response to the question about, I did prepare two ordinances. Those two ordinances were provided to the clerk and the administration. Um, it's not my job as the township attorney to determine what is or is not put on the uh, agenda. So there was an ordinance prepared that prohibited um, cannabis within the township. With respect to the definitions that are included within this ordinance, these are all from the state legislation. Who wanted this included, the micro business? Was that asked for you or asked to put on this? It was not specifically requested. All the definitions were lifted from the state statute. Yeah. And um, so from listening to everyone that called in, a majority was not, were not from our town. Um, did we speak to the, um, to get like stakeholders? Have we spoken to the school superintendent, the police chief, the DARE officer? I know a couple of um, years back, Harry, you were really supportive of Mothers Against Drunk Drivers. Have we spoken to them, how they feel about this? Have we gotten any input from anyone? Like, I know we're saying it's going to reduce taxes, but can you all promise the town that this is going to reduce property taxes? Because that's what seems to be the big push here, that this is going to reduce property taxes. Tony, it's not my push. Uh, the compromise I offered was, and I have a whole statement I'm gonna read, you know I've researched this, and I'm gonna go through my, my professional, because a lot of new residents don't know me like you guys know. So I'll read what I've done and where my position is and what I'm offering at the end. Okay, because you know I, I don't wanna stand against, against the dispensaries, but only offer that because as a compromise, but I'll, I'll read this to you and to everybody else listening, of course. The controversy over an opt-out marijuana ordinance, which you know we have to, it's either August 21 or 22nd is the due date we have to act on it or not act on it. We don't act on anything, it all is allowed. Centers on dispensaries causing easier access for teenagers to obtain marijuana. I understand my fellow con council persons the concerns. Unfortunately, marijuana, marijuana is already very accessible to our teenagers. My opinion is dispensaries should be allowed with strict regulations and accountability. The use of recre recreational marijuana should be treated as the same as the use of alcohol beverages. Marijuana is here, recreational use is not going away. My position is based on the election results, my training education experience listed as part as follows. 70.02% of the Vernon voters supported this constitutional amendment to legalize the possession and the use of marijuana for persons under the age of 21 and older and legalize the cultivation, processing, well, not the cultivation, the processing and sale of retail marijuana. Cultivation, not, not for personal use, but, you know, as uh, companies. So before I go on about my professional, I have witnessed, I have grieved the loss of family members due to drug overdoses, and friends. So the personal part of it, I've been there. I've grieved. But my professional, uh, and I'm only saying this to establish some kind of credibility with everyone. I was a detective command commander for seven years, internal affairs, I did the bias officers, and I was assigned to the 9-11 terrorism task force. I was also an instructor of rest, search, and seizure for 17 years at the Bergen County Police and Fire Department uh, um, Academy. I assisted initiators supervise the arrest of approximately 414 people for violations pertaining to illegal drug possession and distribution of controlled dangerous substances, commonly called CDS. It's granted 112 search warrants directed at the seizure of controlled dangerous substances, instituted department procedures to standardize the handling of juvenile matters. I was a national school resource officer, and I'm also uh, certified as a tree, uh, police training instructor. I also created a youth esteem strategy program for West Milford where I was a police officer and we were to identify and help at-risk youths and their families. My colleagues and I, and I'm talking about my career as a law enforcement officer, and I took an aggressive approach to enforcing the 1993 statewide narcotics action plan to mobilize the state's enforcement assets to identify, investigate, prosecute, convict, and incarcerate narcotics criminals at all levels of the distribution chain, most of them were users. We even put an undercover agent for almost four months in the high school, posing as a student. If my figures are right, and it was a long time ago, I realized we identified 66 kids using it and almost a dozen 
young adults selling there or actually dealing in the school. Are we attempting to identify and force people with CDS addictions, including numerous juveniles and young adults into counseling, rehabs, and if necessary, incarceration as a last resort, depending on the individual's situation. But what I witness, and I agree with our attorney general, we're not going to arrest our way out of this abuse control, dangerous substance problem. We've seen it. Money spent on investigations, prosecutions, incarcerations, probations, and parole for simple possession and use of CDS would be better spent on education, counseling, rehabilitation, and drug recognition experts. The 2% tax generated from dispensaries should be used for education about drugs and DREs. And not only drugs, but I'm also talking about nicotine and alcohol. It's time to put an end to the war on drugs and funnel money away from arresting and jailing low-level offenders and toward public and mental health programs. So I'm not looking at it as just tax revenue. I'm looking at social aspects of this problem. New Jersey spent $11.5 billion, billion dollars arresting, prosecuting, incarcerating people for drug crimes such as the use and possession from 2010 to 2019, according to a report by the Drug War Coalition in conjunction with and I know they're left of it because someone criticized you, Tony, for using, I think it was you, Tony, some uh, right conservative. So I tried to go in the middle, so I want to let you know that organization, to be fair and be perfectly transparent with you guys. Uh, Think Tank, New Jersey policy perspective. Despite all the money spent on arrest and prosecution of drug crimes, overdose deaths exceeded 3,000 in 2019, more than double that they were in 2012. Between 2010 and 2019, nearly 20,000 New Jersey's died of drug-related overdose. And I'll post this all on Facebook with my sources because I know the fact checks are going to come out and I welcome that. I read countless articles and studies regarding legalization of marijuana. I also considered editorials, including the Star-Ledger editorial board. They've seen like that prohibition of the alcohol in the 1920s. Our war on weed is nonsense and destructive. It's an extraordinary waste of law enforcement resources and a boon to the criminal black market. We are long past the tipping point on this with two thirds of voters now backing legalization. Now I super, I wasn't a DARE officer, but I supervised DARE officers. And I think DARE really in the 1990s, we've actually gone to different drug education in our schools. Gateway drugs are substances that when consumed, give away to harder, more dangerous drugs. I'm defining them now because a lot of different people have different uh, definitions. These milder substances, such as nicotine or alcohol, are believed to open the door to drugs such as meth, heroin, and cocaine, which can lead to addiction. I do want to put in here that when I was a cop, it was mostly crack we were dealing with, cocaine, and heroin was just really coming on the scene at an alarming rate because it was cheaper and easier to get than the uh, other powders. Marijuana, alcohol, nicotine, and other gateway drugs post dav davamine, boost davamine levels dopamine levels, which increases pleasure. The dopamine boost caused by gateway drugs during adolescence brain makes the brain release less dopamine during adulthood. This leads people to seek harder drugs that cause more dramatic uh, dopamine releases according to the gateway drug theory. Since the 1980s, education, educationers have warned students about the dangers of gateway drugs. National anti-drug programs such as Drug Abuse Resistance Education DARE specifically outline the consequences of three potential gateway drugs. They are marijuana, alcohol, and tobacco. Through the years, middle school health educators have made gateway drugs a staple in their teachings. However, the controversy surrounding the concept has led some to reconsider using this term. DARE officials now admit that most people who smoke pot do not move to harder drugs, according to the New York Times. Critics believe that marijuana use, use may prevent other drug use, but little credibility Credible evidence exists to prove that assertion. Critics also say the gateway drug theory is flawed because it often relies on animal studies. They also say that drug use rates in other countries aren't affected by prevalence of marijuana. There's also evidence that genetic differences at birth may increase a person's risk to drug use. It has been known in the scientific community for nearly decades that most drug users begin with alcohol and nicotine before marijuana, usually before they are the legal age. In the sense of marijuana use, typically proceeds rather than follows initiation of other illicit drug use. It is indeed a gateway drug, but because underage cigarette smoking and alcohol use typically proceeds. Marijuana use. 
So fewer than 10%, the studies that I'm looking at, fewer than 10% of those people try marijuana ever end up meeting the clinical criteria for dependence on it, whereas 32% of tobacco users and 15% of alcohol users do. I propose this ordinance with the support of Mayor Burrell in an attempt to reach governing body consensus because I do listen to your guys' concerns and I do care about your opinions through compromise and consideration of voting public's uh, direction. Dispensaries would be prohibited at this time. All other licenses allowed in the zones. And when I worded it, I specifically looked at zones that I feel would be accommodating enough and not interfere with concerns that you guys express. The indisputable fact is American's attitude towards recreational marijuana is more accepting as demonstrated by recent passing pro-recreational marijuana use legislation. If this is passed, I propose a dispensary issue, and I don't like doing this, and I do it in rare cases, occasions, be decided by the public referendum next November. Because I think it was you, Tony, that said, uh, with the six licenses, you can't distinguish did the people, were they voting to approve dispensaries or just cultivation? That resonated with me. I, I heard you loud and clear on that. And I'm pretty sure it was you. Mm -hmm. um, and Kelly, if it was you, I, I, heard, I heard that statement made. So I'm looking for compromise and consensus. This is not just about tax revenue. It's, it's a social issue. And I don't want it tearing up the community over it. I know whether 70%, they said yes. But if you want to divide it more, what I'm offering, and Josh, as, lo as long as it's legally, we can do this legally, and the council supports it with the mayor, then I would say let's move the dispensary issue to November and let the public vote on it. They're our bosses. Let them decide it. And we don't have to hash this out in, in a draw-out political battle. I know I just gave you guys a lot. But I, I really, it meant a lot to me where your concerns were. I've done a lot of research and I know I had to probably board you with all that information, but that's where I'm coming from. As a, as a former law enforcement officer, I know it's there. I wanna control it like we control alcohol and tobacco use. And I'd rather, I'd rather have it controlled by us. And everybody else, chime in, <laughs> please. Your, your opinions are important. Well, Oh. I appreciate that. I appreciate, um, you know, and I, I think um, the idea of controlling it is good. But, um, and again, I'm okay with a warehouse, a distributor, a farming location. We're a farming town. I think it's great. I think, you know, do it. But I don't think, I mean, I don't think we're the best at um, controlling things. I mean, I've seen it the last two weeks in this town, things that are right by the municipal building, right? We're not controlling things. There's some illegal business going on. We're not doing anything about those things. Why will, that's just my, I feel like as a town, we're letting things slip through and it's not good. Um, but again, I have no, I have no, um, I'm okay with putting it on the ballot. I'm fine with that. I think that's fair. Uh, 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 Mr. Council President, let, let me just say that uh, I think we're still talking about uh, some of our feelings about the dispensaries. And that actually is not what's been considered in this ordinance. Uh, no, the micro business I, I, as well. It says retail right in the micro business. I don't, I think that's kind of a way to, I mean, you say the retail is prohibited, but then right under micro business, it says retail. So are we saying yes to retail or no? Just to, just to be clear about the micro businesses, the micro businesses are a certain category of businesses that the state's corrected. If retail is not allowed in any zone, it doesn't matter if you're a micro or macro business, you're not gonna be able to engage in retail sales. Also with respect to the referendum issue, the immediate issue for the governing body to decide is whether or not they're going to regulate uh, cannabis at all. If they do not, and they don't uh, enact any regulations, then if the August 21st current date passes and there's no regulation, it becomes allowed for five years and there's nothing you can do about it for five years. Okay. So the immediate so, issue to decide right now is whether or not to regulate or not regulate. And, and let, let me just say, because, I, because of the fact that uh, I was the one who reached out to both 
Council President Shortway and Council Member Chile to try to create a, a compromise. Um, because it, 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 seems, it seemed clear to me that the one issue on which there was disagreement was on the retail sale of the dispensaries. Uh, warehouses, farming, all those different kinds of facilities, you know, you could pass them, you wouldn't even know that they were there. You, you would not. And, 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 as I have, and as I have talked to uh, uh, both Council Member uh, uh, Weller and Chile, the two individuals who, who, who were, were so adamant against dispensaries, I understood that that's what that they were concerned about. They, 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 didn't want, they didn't want us to end up being like a place with uh, uh, cannabis places on every corner and that kind of thing. Although I don't think that that'll happen, but that's what they feel, and I understand that. And those feelings are important. Uh, one of the things, though, you need to look at getting these licenses are not going to be easy. They're very, you know, it, it's not like some guy who has a smoke shop and we aren't regulated. It, they're, they're not going to be easy. They're very expensive. Uh, they have to be renewed every year like a liquor license. And, uh, and it, it's, it's not going to be easy. For example, everybody who's, anybody who's associated with any of these businesses have to have a criminal background check. That's just one of the things. So um, if we could just agree on this ordinance that talks about everything other than dispensaries or retail sales, and I want to make some comments on this uh, in my mayor's comment, then I'd like to see us, us take another look later on at the possible dispensaries. You know, uh, I made it clear where I stood. I would vote to have everything. But I would have, I would, I would vote to really have a, a retail sales uh, limited to a certain location, a certain number within a certain part of our town. That's how I, that's how I would do it. And I'm going to advocate that that's what we do. I really, I really think that this is a very good and thoughtful council. And I think if we can just get past this emotional part of it right now, to approve everything but these dispensaries, is that what we're going to call them? Then we have an opportunity to lay it on look at dispensaries and, and you know after we get some data on it. It's my understanding that there has been one assembly person who has even proposed an extension by 60 uh, days, the actual uh, opt-out date. So that means a lot of other towns are having problems with this too. Uh, and let me just give you one more thing and just to, just to give you some data because I have been looking at what other towns have been doing uh, I have asked Marcy to get data for me uh, and, and get the uh, ordinance or what they're considering for the town. So far, we've heard from 18 of the 24 towns in Sussex County. That's 75%. Eight of, eight of those, have, those have either opt out, they've passed opt out resolutions, or they've introduced one for the, on the first reading. Uh, another eight have allowed either some or all of everything. Uh, most of those have allowed uh, uh, everything but uh, but dispensaries. Some of those have allowed dispensaries, and they've allowed them on certain streets and in certain segments of town, and two have not yet decided. So let's just give you an idea of what we are, and that there are a lot of people who are, who are battling with the same thing. And I really think that if we could pass this ordinance, we could introduce this ordinance tonight. Uh, uh, we will have a, another couple of weeks to be able to have our second reading. We'll have more information at that time. And then even after, which I hope we do pass this ordinance on the second reading, we'll have an opportunity to be able to look at retail cannabis sales. Which All right, guys. Me, I'm sorry, go ahead, Andy. Which brings me to a question that Josh probably has to answer. How long do we have to modify this ordinance uh, if we want to add retail sales for how long is it six months eight months 18 months after you uh, I'll take another look at the state statute but my last review of the state statute is nothing prohibits a municipality that has acted from <coughs> tweaking their regulations what the state has done is if you don't act you are allowing it presumptively for five years within your municipality. So by enacting legislation right now, the governing body can then go back and modify that legislation, but they need to do something by August 21st or you default into the allow all 
all different classes of licenses allowed in uh, certain zones within the municipality. Well, that's good because I, the proposal that Harry spoke about, we've spoken about in a couple of ways is either uh, put it on the ballot for the people to vote on in November, or let's bring this up as a, a separate ordinance and uh, bring it up later in the year. But I do like the idea of letting the people have one more vote at it. I think that's a really good idea. Thank you, Josh. You're welcome. Harry, my question, because I think, um, so it says no more than three of each following uses shall be permitted in the light industrial zone. Or, and then it spoke about um, McAfee Village and the north side of property. What about all other locations? Is that just, we don't mention that or it's just? Be prohibited. Okay. I, again, what I've heard from constituents, they want it limited. And I was listening to both you and, and Kelly uh, and again, I'm trying to put in controls. I don't want anything interfering. I've met with uh, corporations and companies uh, that want to set up businesses here. You, you have to look at, is it going to be a thousand feet? I mean, the original ones I proposed, I studied many of them and I ended up taking them from uh, Colorado. It was like, not that qu quantity means a lot, but it was like 5,500 words. And I probably went overboard and the state would probably uh, not allow some of the restrictions I was looking at. So again, I was looking for consensus. I was looking for compromise. Uh, I, even considering the other 30% of the people that don't want in town, that we limit it and we control it. So but just, just to be clear, I, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, it was just, you would only have the max three in those zones. In McAfee Village was really my original ordinance. So like it's a C2 is I was looking for the dispensaries to be allowed in that section of town again listening to the public the last meeting listening to you kelly and you uh about the town center so i said okay maybe i can get a compromise here and we move it out outside to another commercial area towards the borders uh, and they can use the the business down there because right now if, if they buy from one there they can't stop the delivery so again that's why i put the c to it So, so this is saying no, but in my re no retail at all in Vernon or no? That's with this ordinance and we can, what I'm proposing, I suggested the vote, but we can pass this one. So we know the five and six are allowed and then we can handle the dispensaries at another time. I, I favor, of course, letting the people decide on this issue because of the social impacts. Mm -hmm. But then again, I'm only one vote and, you know, I welcome and, the input from my other four uh, partners here and and uh, mayor. And, and and I guess to answer your question more directly, uh, Councilman Michelli, this is a uh, an ordinance that does not allow dispensaries in the town. Okay. So just just to be clear, the, the phrase dispensary is not used in the state statute. They define different classes of licenses, and a dispensary is a retailer. Mm -hmm. Ordinance provides, the proposed ordinance, it's section two, cannabis retailer shall be a prohibited use and not permitted in any zones within the township of Vernon. So at this point in time, the township is not allowing retail sales of cannabis. You know, that being said, one part, one thing that everyone should be aware of is that the township, you know, has to tread carefully here because the state does allow cannabis consumption for example, the township is not able to regulate delivery at all. Uh, okay. Delivery is permitted within the township of Vernon. So we just need to keep that in mind um, as you continue, continue to think about this issue. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I just have a couple comments. Um, you know, Harry, we talk a little bit about the strict regulations that we're going to put on this. And I guess a concern there for me is our, our I think Tony mentioned it too, our, our lack of being able to kind of um, police a lot of other things that have gone on in the town. And what will the cost be for us to do this? It's always gonna be a concern. Everyone is, is happy to hear that this could bring some additional uh, tax breaks to the town, but what will this cost us to have to, you know, put in place more strict regulations? My second point is, it's been made clear a bunch of times tonight that yes, 70% of the town voted in favor of legalizing this. But did 70% of the town vote in favor 
of having this in their town, you know? So I think that that's different. I think the number, I think the number would look different when it's, you know, more specific like that. So maybe, maybe we do put this on the ballot and let the public decide, you know, because when the people talk, you know, that's, that's, that, that's who should make the decision. The town, let the people speak. Hey, that's my thoughts. Thank you, Kelly. Yep. Mm -hmm. John, any, anything? Andrew, anything more? I'm good. Uh, my only thing is, like I said, the last meeting that we had, um, you know, it's hard when uh, government keeps pushing its nose into what people mm. do. This has been approved by the, the people of the state. I think that the retail should be in here included already, but I have no problem putting it up for a referendum again. Josh, uh, would we be able to do that? And what would be the deadline? It probably would have to be uh, done before August 30th, the question, right? We'd have to pass an ordinance to get it on the uh, ballot as a question. I have to check the uh, the referendum statute to see what the deadlines and the signature requirements would be in order to get a referendum on the ballot in November. Okay. I, I know we had a lot of discussion about that with the open space money, so. Um, that's why August seems to be looking. So it's it's going to be some busy work in the next uh, several weeks. If, if well, that's it, the council, it, it, no. you know, it's, it's it's my hope, Mr. Council President, that <clears throat> after some thought and reflection, that a majority of the council could come together uh, on a either a separate ordinance or amend in this ordinance to allow dispensaries, limited number in limited locations. Uh, I don't think that that's necessarily uh, out of the question. I think that uh, I, I, I have faith in the people on this council. I think that we can bridge this, this little gap. I believe so. Anybody else have anything to add? Because uh, I'll ask for uh, a motion. Motion to approve ordinance number 21-16. Second. Roll call, please. Vice President Orberger? Yes. Council Member Chili? Uh, yes. Yes. Council Member Pitzker? Yes. Council Member Weller? Yes. Council President Shortway? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, uh, moving forward. Thank you for that discussion, too. Uh, it's an interesting activity, but however you want to do it. Thank you, everyone. Ordinance 21 17, ordinance amending and supplementing ordinance, ordinance 20 08, establishing salaries for certain non union employees. The ordinance amends and supplements the township code. Uh, do we want to have a discussion on this, Mayor? On the yeah, I'd, I'd like to make a comment on it. Um, before you proceed on any action on this ordinance, I'd like to offer an amendment. It has come to my attention, and, and just today, uh, that there is a position in this ordinance that has been discussed, but due to perhaps an administrative oversight has not yet been formally authorized by the council, uh, as our formal government requires. Because, this said, because of this administrative oversight, uh, I'm recommending that before the council considers this ordinance, that it be amended by withdrawing this position from the ordinance. The position of which I speak is that of a assistant DPW director. And, and, and even though this position will not require any new staffing, because of the importance of the position to our plans to make continuous improvement in an already very good organization, I believe that the creation of this position needs to be discussed by the council and the mayor and probably at a public council meeting. So with those comments, Mr. Council President, I request that ordinance 21-17 be amended and passed with the removal of the assistant director of public works position. Um, so be amended. Uh, council okay with that? One further discussion on that? I'm good with it. But then I'd like to introduce the ordinance 21-17 with the amendment that the mayor put forth, dropping that position from this and letting the others stand. 
So may I have a motion to introduce Ordinance 21-17. Motion to introduce Ordinance 21-17 as amended. Second. So you have a second. Roll call, please. Vice President Wahlberger? Yes. Council Member Chilling? Yes. Council Member Pitzker? Yes. Council Member Weller? Yes. Council President Shortway? Yes. Motion carries as amended. Okay, public hearing, second reading of ordinance. Ordinance of Township of Vernon County, Sussex, State of New Jersey, amending and supplementing Chapter 250 of the Municipal Code of the Township of Vernon, entitled Fees and Escrows to Add Fees for Background Checks by the Vernon Police Department. This ordinance amends and supplements the Township Code. May I have a motion to open the public hearing for this ordinance, Ordinance 21-14? Motion open to the public. Second that. All in favor, aye. Aye. Is anyone opposed? Is anybody abstaining? No, okay, the floor is open, Marcy, controls are yours. Sure. Uh, just if anyone wants to speak on this ordinance, please state your name and the uh, municipality you reside in, please. I see, I see no hands up. Okay, since no one from the public desires to speak, may I have a motion to close the floor to the public regarding this ordinance? Motion to close to the public. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is anyone opposed? Is anyone abstaining? Seeing no one, the floor is now closed. May I have a motion to adopt ordinance 21-14? Motion to adopt 2114. Second. Roll call, please. Is that council member Chile second? Or I think we both did it, but it's fine. Whoever, Kelly did it, said it yes. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Vice President Auberger? Yes. Council member Chile? Yes. Council member Pitzker? Yes. Council member Weller? Did yes, you say? Sorry. That's okay. I did. Council President Shortway? Yes. Motion carries. Moving on to Ordinance 21-15, Capital Ordinance, providing for various improvements by the Township of Vernon in the County of Sussex, New Jersey, appropriating therefore the sum of $10,000 and providing that such sum so appropriated shall be raised from the Capital Improvement Fund of the Township. This Capital Ordinance provides for various improvements by the Township. May I have a motion to open the floor to the public for Ordinance 21-15. Motion to open to the floor on Ordinance 21-15. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is anyone opposed? Anyone abstaining? Seeing no one, the floor is now open to the public. Uh, public, if uh, anyone desiring to speak on this matter, please state your name and the municipality in which you reside. Thank you. Um, I don't see any hands. Okay, therefore, can I have a motion <laughs> to close the floor to the public? Motion to close. Second. Roll call, please. I'm sorry. All in favor? Aye. 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 Is anybody opposed? And anybody abstaining? Seeing none, the floor is now closed to the public. May I now have a motion to adopt Ordinance 21 15. Motion to adopt Ordinance 21 15. Second. Roll call, please. Vice, Vice President Orberger? Yes. Council Member Chile? Yes. Council Member Pitzker? Yes. Council Member Weller? Yes. Council President Shortway? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, we're moving on to public comments, limited to three minutes on any topic. Please remember it's three minutes. Anyone desiring to speak, please state your name and the municipality in which you reside. May I have a motion to open the floor to the public? Motion open the floor to the public comments. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Seeing none, the floor is now open to the public. Marcy, it's all yours. Sure. I'm just gonna put my timer on. Okay. I have um, Natalie Boussieri.
Okay, can you hear me? Hi, yeah. Natalie. Hi, thank you. Um, I, I do appreciate all the um, effort and time you took into your statement, Mr. Shortway, and the research that you put into that. Um, I appreciate um, your compromise. I. I did, I did hear you say that you met with businesses looking to, I guess, start some type of, whether it's distribution, growing, some type of business in Vernon, but I did not hear you say that you spoke to the Center for Prevention and Counseling or to our superintendent or to our police chief. So I, I think to get a really good balanced opinion on both sides, I would have liked to have heard you say, maybe you did say that, but I didn't hear that. And I think that was something that was mentioned a couple times, especially because those are the um, the people in our community that are work closest with our kids, our families, um, even, you know, working with DIFUS or they don't call it DIFUS anymore, you know, just those types of resources that might be impacted by this and getting that side, I think would be important. So maybe you did mention that, but I didn't hear it, but I, I think that would be really important before the council makes its final decisions on the zoning. Um, you know, uh, I think getting those resources, that feedback would be really important. My second comment is about going back to in-person meetings. I think having a virtual option is great. I think doing a hybrid model like the school board, like Will Vernon School Board has been doing, I know a lot of school boards haven't, is, is really great because there's not, not everyone's able to get out. Um, so having that Zoom for our citizens to, who can't get out in person is really important. But I think, um, you know, you've experienced glitches. I think it really just cements that need to be in person. Um, I do appreciate your comment on Facebook regarding that, Mr. Shortway. But I was surprised that you did not reference like the League of Municipalities or some other guidance that maybe instead you, you, you listed the judiciary, which I thought was a little odd and maybe that's normal i'm not on the town council but i thought that was odd i did go to, to the um, new jersey league of municipalities website and i looked at their may 28th weekly update and they do a COVID update and they highlighted on that um the mandates that were lifted specifically lifting restrictions indoor mask mandate in public spaces lifting of social distancing um this was regarding restaurants and stuff physical work sites, lifting um, mandates there, no longer mandating to wear a mask, no longer needing to social distance. So it doesn't address um, municipalities, but it does, those really did address any social gathering, which I think is what you'd consider a council meeting. So I would ask again to have a discussion, because I don't recall hearing a discussion at a council meeting. Um, I don't know, I don't know how it works. I, I have only the Board of Ed, um, experience so if we when we talked about it we would ask that to be on the agenda and we'd have a discussion as a group i didn't hear a discussion as a group on how your group felt on going back to in-person meetings so i think that would be important for the public to hear and i think really having a hybrid um i'm i'm a little sad the county commissioners did not include their zoom option um live because i think it's good to have both um now that we know we can do this technology it really does um allow more transparency and allow more feedback from the community. And I think a lot of people appreciate that. Um, that's it, thank you. And I got it under three minutes, I guess. I didn't think I'd make it. You just made it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um. I don't see any other hands up. Usually when I say that I get one or two, but I don't see any other hands, Council President. Therefore, can I have a motion to close the floor to public discussion? Motion to close the floor to public discussion. Public comment. Kelly seconded. I just didn't hear you seconded, Kelly. Yes, I did. Thank you. Okay. All in favor, aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Seeing none. The floor is now closed. Mayor, you're up on deck. Thank Mayor, you. Um, you're welcome, sir. My, my, my comments tonight are kind of based on what I think, just one personal one, is in the overall best interest of our town. You know, it is said that successful political leadership is the art of compromise. I strongly believe this statement to be true, and I have adhered to it over the years of my political life. 
uh, be it during the years that I've served uh, on our municipal board of education, be it the years that I've served on our town council, on our board of commissioners, or the year and a half that I've had the honor and privilege of serving as this municipality's mayor. Consistent with my belief in compromise, Ordinance 2116 that the council has passed tonight, which permits the operation of four types of cannabis commercial enterprises in our town, was an ordinance of compromise and a compromise in which I proudly played a role in creating. And while I believe that this ordinance represents a good, a fair compromise, it's no secret that this is not the approach to the approval of cannabis commercial enterprises in our town that I would have preferred. I would have preferred that in addition to allowing the four types of cannabis operations that are permitted by the ordinance passed tonight, that our town also allowed, number one, the operation of a specific limited number of thoroughly vetted and licensed cannabis retail establishments. And number two, that these limited number of thoroughly vetted and licensed cannabis retail establishment be restricted by ordinance to specific locations in our town that are outside of our town center district. Now, I don't believe for one moment that those who do not share my view on how our town should manage this type of new legal commercial enterprise in our town I don't believe for one moment that they are bad people or that they are people who don't care about the town or its residents. I believe that our difference of opinion simply represents different points of views of what this means for our town and for our residents. Let's think that's really what it's all about. So let me be clear in terms of what I believe that my desired approach means for our town and for our residents. Number one, I don't believe that allowing the operation of a legal, thoroughly vetted and licensed cannabis retail establishment in our town will have any significant or noticeable impact on the number of ad adults or non-adults who will use or purchase cannabis. Now, while I fully understand that some of the reasonable concerns and fears that's motivating opinions about this issue, I believe that it would be helpful and beneficial to the making of a high quality decision for our town, if we could temper our emotions to an extent that would enable us to come to grips with the fact that this product is now legal to purchase and use in every municipality in the state of New Jersey. And that fact will remain no matter what, what, what we opt out or opt in, what, no matter what opt out or opt in decision that we or any other municipality make. That's the, that's, that's the truth. My view on this issue is also influenced by the data which reveals that all over our nation, Americans have moved towards and are continuing to move toward purchasing more and more of their products online and having these products delivered to their home. For confirmation of this fact, all that you need to do is to number one, look at the number of malls, the number of mall stores and other brick and mortar stores that have closed, closed over the past couple of years. And number two, observe the ever increasing number of Amazon, UPS, FedEx, US Postal and other delivery trucks in all of our communities, delivering ordered products to individuals home sometimes seven days a week. It's a fact that individuals now get almost everything delivered from medications to groceries. And because New Jersey law says that no town can restrict a licensed cannabis deliverer from delivering cannabis products within any town in the state of New Jersey, I have no doubt that much of the cannabis sold by vetted licensed cannabis retail establishment will be ordered online or by phone by individuals who want these products and that these products will be delivered to these individuals at their homes or other desired locations just like medications or groceries. This will happen in towns all over the state of New Jersey, whether or not these towns opt out or opt in to allowing legal cannabis establishments to operate within their town. Number two, what I do believe 
is that if we don't allow the operation of legal, thoroughly vetted, and licensed cannabis retail establishments in our town, those municipalities that do will get not only the valuable real estate tax dollars from these licensed legal establishments, but also the additional very valuable tax dollars in the amount of 2% of the gross sales that are made by the licensed cannabis retail establishment. According to the New Jersey Department of Health, Division of, Mar of Medical Marijuana, from April 2019, the average selling price of one ounce of cannabis ranged from $360 to $500. This selling price has been confirmed by various reports that are readily available on any simple internet check. When I saw those figures, I couldn't believe it. So I just went online just to check. If you use the lowest part of this selling range, that is the $360 per ounce, then one ounce of cannabis would sell for approximately $5,760. For a vetted licensed cannabis retail establishment that sold just 1,000 pounds of cannabis per month, just 1,000 pounds a month, this would generate $5,760,000 in gross sales in just one month. And for the municipality in which this vetted and licensed cannabis retail establishment is located, they will collect $115,200 per month or $1,382,000 per year in additional 2% sales tax. Now, I understand that there are those who don't believe that the additional tax dollars that a municipality will earn from a cannabis retail establishment sales will be as much as described in this New Jersey Department of Health report. And they may be correct, I don't know. However, even if the additional tax dollars earned are some amounts less than this, it will still be a lot of revenue that the taxpayer of Vernon Township could use to help offset property taxes. And let me finish up here. It is my hope that after our very thoughtful council, as a collective group, have had more time and opportunity to study the pros and cons of allowing a specific limited number of thoroughly vetted licensed cannabis retail establishment to operate in our town in specific locations outside of our town center, centers of district, that they will think about these facts and literally reconsider that, that decision. Mr. Council President and other council members, that ends my comments tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate it. Okay, let's move on to council comments. Uh, John, you're first up. Okay, um, like I said earlier, I do believe this, we should have the um, retail should have been included this with everything else that was on there. I think that we're gonna find when, if we do end up going to a referendum, that will probably pass because I think if there were things on there that people were certainly against, they're not going to vote for, they're going to vote it down for that reason, not just um, three out of four things I'm for, so I'll vote for it. it. That being said, you know, if it goes that way, it'll be back to the public, and I think it will pass. Uh, as far as somebody asked if the taxes would be dedicated towards property taxes, uh, sitting on the council, I, I can't say that it will be because I, I've seen how government works. I mean, I, I had the privilege of being the chief of the Vernon Fire Department for a while, and we submitted five-year plans, but, you know, if money's not put away towards those plans, they don't really matter. So when money comes in, if there's a greater need, it goes somewhere. I, I can't say that it will go right where uh, we say it will go. It has to go where the need is. I think the town in, in the last few years has done a great job in trying to manage down the debt uh, paying for things instead of bonding everything, uh, the enterprise program between police cars, mm -hmm. vehicles for the fire department, emergency services, the DPW. Uh, I think there's a long way we can still go. I mean, you know, we, we talk, uh, and we're all taxpayers as well, we talk about the taxes. I mean, there's certain things we know from our own homes. You're going to have increases, whether it's fuel for all the DPW trucks, the sand and grit, supplies in the office part of it fuel for vehicles, it, it all goes up. Health care, um, contract employee with the salaries, it all goes up. We just have to be smart about what we can do. So 
I've gone too long. So that's it. No, um, yes. well, thank you. Marcy, did he use up his three minutes? He used Probably more for me. Five, at least five. <laughs> <laughs> Got them all banked. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly? Um, I just want to make a quick comment. Um, and Mr. Mayor, you mentioned taking emotion out of this. And I believe this is an emotional top for, for so many of us. So to say that, that we should take the emotion out of it, I think is, is unfair. I mean, you heard the majority of the people who spoke evening speak about medical issues and clearly that's an emotional topic. So I think it's, it's not always easy to take that out of the mix. Um, I've got two small children. So of course, this is uh, this is an emotional topic for me as well, you know. But I do just want to say that I appreciate all of the public interest and all of the comments. Um, I think it's great to see so many people take an interest in this and want to voice their opinion. So I thank the public for all of their comments this evening and for everyone's um, comments. I think everyone did a lot of homework and really had a vested interest in making sure we do the right thing. So thank that's my comment. Thank you. Let, 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 let me just say, Mr. Council President, uh, if I said take the motion out, uh, I didn't mean to. I thought I said temper because I think that emotions is an important part of how we live. Uh, whenever we make a decision, if we can look at that decision as a jar of liquid, part of it is logic and part of it is emotion. That's the way human beings are. And I'm most certainly don't look down on anybody who has emotional decision. You're a parent, you're a human being. And so I don't, I don't knock that. So I want you to make sure I'm not poo-pooing that. I think I said temper our emotions. That is moderate them. Look at them evenly. Thank and you I so much. Got that wrong. Sorry. Andrew? Well, I have a couple of subjects. One is uh, I met with the Homeowners Association of Glen Harbor on June 16th to gather their input and develop what they feel is a good ordinance for shooting range and firearms ordinance to be drafted. Uh, this was a very open discussion with about community safety and concerns of the residents with firearm safety. I've noted their concerns and provided this input to our attorney to review a possible input to the ordinances being developed so that we have a good balance of residential safety and respect for the second amendment. Uh, I do wanna thank the HOA of Glen Harbor for a fruitful and very progressive dialogue. We spent an hour at the beach talking with a variety of the family and I was impressed by the, the dialogue. Uh, I hope we can come up with two good res, uh, ordinances in the future here to review by August one for gun range requirements and one for firearm safety in residential areas. It is about community safety all the way around. So thank you, Glen Harbor Estates for sharing that time with me. Um, second subject is on June 10th, I was part of a team to present the bicycle pump track and trails proposal. As I stated back then, I looked forward to constructive dialogue and discussions on the presentation and questions. Since that time, I've been made aware of a few questions that have been asked through the OPRA process. Well, OPRA is a process by which you can access public records. So based on that information that I was given and my quest to be open and helpful, I've tried to capture these questions and we've updated the FAQ file on the town's website with the help of various people in the township administration in getting these questions answered. So today there's an update that was added please go to the town website and visit the homepage. And there you will find at the bottom left-hand side of the homepage, an update on the walking and bike trail pump track, specifically new FAQ files. And also we've revised the presentation and added an additional financial chart, specifically slide 21. So please, if you have any questions, feel free to contact any one of us, whether it's the administration or the council, and we'll get those questions answered for you. And thank you on that. And in closing tonight, we've had a lot of dialogue about cannabis. I've also, over the last two weeks, I've had a lot of dialogue with residents. And it's been a great honor to listen to so many residents loud and clear. We have one more reading of this uh, for approval and I'm looking forward to seeing more residents come out and talk about it two weeks from now or whenever we schedule our next meeting. So with that, I'll say thank you and thanks for a great dialogue tonight. Appreciate it. Thank you, Andrew. Tony. Yeah, I, I just have a, a question for the mayor. Mayor, you were talking about the tax um, revenue that we could potentially get from this and how huge it can be. But 
why do you think then all these other towns, they have the same information. Why do you think they opted out? Have you spoken to any of them to get their thoughts on why? No, no I have not. I have not spoken to any, any towns. As I said, uh, eight have opted out. Uh, eight have either uh, allowed some or all. I have and, 12, and, but I'm sorry. Me? I have 12 that opted out on my list from Marcy. Oh, maybe okay. I'm wrong. You, you, no, you're probably correct. Uh, mm -hmm. I, uh, my, 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 my chart was as of last, uh, as of last week, oh, but okay. you know, as, as of last week, uh, you know, I, I, I understand that municipalities are making different decisions and I would not say that those municipalities are wrong. I don't really think it's in our best interest to opt out. I think that those municipalities that have chosen to opt out, cannabis is going to be sold in their community. It's going to be sold in their town. It's going to be delivered. Uh, you can't prevent people from using it. A person can walk around and smoke it. They can use it. And, you know, maybe those towns might feel that uh, they don't need this revenue. You know, I, I think, for example, Sparta is one of the towns that opted out. Well, Sparta has that huge development out on Route 15 out there. Well, they, they got a gazillion dollars worth of taxes, I guess, in it. We have to look at our own individual situation. So that's, therefore, I'm not, I'm not looking down my nose at what decision anyone else made. But I actually believe that this is in the best interest of Vernon, from my perspective. Mm -hmm. And just the one other thing that I think um, someone um, talked, spoke about, and this is my vision too. He said he was in Boston and there was a line out the door. Like, so are we going to have a line out the door by the, the pet store in town where kids are going in and then there's a line out the door, people waiting for, you know, their cannabis? Like, I don't know. It's just not the town that I thought Vernon was, but maybe I'm wrong and put it to vote. So that's it. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. Uh, for my comments, um, you know, there's a lot of negative stuff about the financial standing of the town. So I'm going to address that in a little bit of the history since we have so many new residents. We property taxpayers have paid for the misguided decisions made in the past that result in the deterioration of municipal assets, defunding our volunteer emergency services, the failure to replace fire protective equipment, contractual agreements contrary to the Faulkner Act, and an increase in minimum sewer allocation when it was not needed. The fund balance was recklessly decreased and the bond sinking fund was depleted to prevent increases in taxes. It has been a very difficult journey for the last six years for us. And we really have put a lot of hard work into making this town better. The township was successful in defending itself from frivolous lawsuits by former members of the land use board in the 2015-2016 Environmental Commission. That costs money. We took on the owners of Silver Spruce Landfill and stopped the trucks from delivering their hazardous soils. That probably cost, cost the taxpayers probably about $100,000. By December 31st, 2015, the fund balance was decreased to, and I'm going to give you round numbers, $2.1 million in a scheme not to raise taxes. Matter of fact, in 2015, $1.4 million was used from the balance, so we didn't see a tax increase. We now utilize approximately $600,000 a year out of the fund balance. Last year, we used more because we had saved more to offset well, we anticipate financial difficulties because of COVID. By December 31st, 2019, we increased the fund balance to 3.7 million. Even after COVID, our surplus is projected to be $3.8 million by the end of this year. We have paid down the township debt by several million dollars over the last several years. In 2015, net debt was $30.5 million. In 2020, net debt fell to $26.8 million. The MUA did not raise its rates for 2021, and the MUA realized a net capital gain of $658,000 at the close of the 2020 year. We continue to fix and maintain the township's assets and purchase new equipment for emergency services, including a ladder truck, a tanker, ambulance, and $100,000 in air packs and other vital equipment for our volunteers. And John, we didn't speak about this beforehand, but you were right on target. We constantly need to upgrade 
the equipment for our volunteers, especially the emergency services. In 2015, the mayor and council majority approved the funding our emergency service fire and first aid squads by $5,000 each without notifying the companies and the squads. We have not only restored funds to our volunteers, but increased payments so they can serve us better. And the mayor, you did it uh, that this year in, in this uh, in your budget. I think you increased it to 40,000 off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. There's three new entities have appeared before the land use board for hearings to initiate new businesses in our town center. In 2015, the hotel occupancy annual revenue was $245,000. By the end of 2019, it was almost up to 300,000 in annual hotel occupancy tax, or as I call it, hot. The projection for hot revenue by the end of this year is now $438,000. I'm confident this increase in revenue is a result of the short-term rental ordinance that we worked so hard to make law. And you know, it probably took about two or three years to get that passed, but we did. We forged a symbiotic public-private financial agreement with Mountain Creek. Joe Hessian and his team continue to meet their financial obligations before the deadlines and have already paid several million dollars in taxes and sore debt. We didn't have to chase them. It was all paid by April, months before the deadline. We continue to push on to develop a town center park to provide our community with amenities and business opportunities. Analysis conducted by the George Mason University for the National Recreation and Park Association and the U.S. Census Bureau found the following. Policy, policymakers and elected officials at all levels of government need to take notice from local officials ensuring dedicated park, public park funding to our state legislators to Congress, the message is clear. Investment in public parks are investments for a better tomorrow. Local and regional park spending not only turns our neighborhoods, towns, and cities into vibrant, connected, and healthier communities, but they also spark economic activity that ripples well beyond the initial spending to create jobs and prosperity through our communities. The economic impact of local parks and examination of this, and I'll post that uh, on Facebook within the next day or two so people can fact check. Yes, Vernon Township is on the upswing. Our foundation is, has, we repaired it and we're stronger than ever, but there's much more work to be done. We are far from over. As a result of our efforts from our volunteers, our municipal workers, and a special recognition to our financial department headed by Danielle Bright, our CFO, elected officials and professionals, and our taxpayers who have footed this bill. Moody's assigned a AA3 rating to our township. This was no easy task following COVID. And here's what Moody's rationale is. Moody's rationale is as follows. The AA3 reflects the township's moderately sized tax base that is expected to see annual growth due to redevelopment of various properties, manageable long-term liabilities, and artificially above average fixed costs caused by voluntary down pay downs in our outstanding debt. The AA3 also reflects Vernon's rebounded rebounded financial position that is expected to grow to higher levels over the next two years, driven by strong financial management, along with the modest increases in revenue. The township's fund balance grew in fiscal 2020, despite uncertainty surrounding the COVID pandemic. So not only as council president and a member of the governing body, but as a taxpayer and a longtime resident of this town, I'd like to thank you all and thank everybody that I mentioned in this report for all your hard work. We are on the right track. There's a lot more work to be done and we can do it. And tonight showed it by compromise and talking our, our discussions out and, and listening to people. We listen to each other and that's how we make our decisions. We don't have to agree, we just need to listen. So thank you. I wish everybody a good night and everybody good health. Thank you. Therefore, John. Motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great evening. What's left well, of Well, nobody opposes. Yeah, nobody opposed and nobody abstained. Sorry. Good night, everyone. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Okay, John.